Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse here and yes, I am back again in more Power Wash Simulator because we're cleaning this house and we are uh, cleaning the year 2021. I don't know if that was quite the right analogy, but hey, we're wrapping it up, uh, do a little bit of uh, fall cleaning, winter cleaning. But uh, last time I talked about the channel, I talked about a lot of the projects and things that I have done over the year. Uh, and it's been, a, you know, for me overall, it's generally been a pretty darn good year. Um, so this time we're going to get more into like the technology and accessibility stuff, all those different types of things. So um, first thing we're going to go through is some of the tech this year that I found has uh, come to, come out and that I've purchased. And I have spent way too much money this year, especially this fall. This fall has been very brutal, <laughs> very brutal on yield wallet. So I'm kind of, you know, it's recovering again, but uh, from about September to mid-November, Ica Rumba, uh, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been a thing. <laughs> It has been very bad on the wallet. So um, earlier this year, we had the M1 iPad. That came out. And, you know, my I was originally thinking I wasn't going to upgrade because I had the 2018 iPad Pro. Um, but then I was hearing really good things about the camera. You know, they had this... Um, upgraded screen as well and again like if you're demoing things for people and just me using it as a low vision user myself the way I use my excuse me using my phone as a CCTV you know maybe being able to use my uh, iPad with a stand as a CCTV I've got that just stand that I did a review for I also did a review earlier this year for the um, Belkin tablet stage, which actually is a, a simpler, cheaper alternative for a tablet stand that works quite well, actually. Um, so you can just prop up your iPad and use it on the stand, or it also works as a pretty nice CCTV uh, stand. So you can use the camera app on your iPad and uh, <clears throat> it works really well. The battery life is great on the iPad Pro. I did a review of it on the channel, so you can check that out if you wish. But um, overall, I am very happy with it. I I watch things on it. I play some games on it. Um, it's really nice for browsing some websites if I want to have, you know, something bigger than my phone. And I, but I want to have like touch screen access. But I want to have more of the more of the straight up, um, what would you call it? Um, like desktop website experience. Uh, sometimes I really do like having that. So that's where the iPad really comes in handy, but I do use it quite regularly. Um, so that's been really good. PlayStation 5. I know that technically came out in 2020, but pfft, like I said, at the end of 2021, there's a lot of people who can't get access to the PS5 yet. They can't even find them to buy them. So there is that. Um, like I said, I was just talking to somebody this morning who's like, God, I wish I could find a PS5. And I'm like, well, I just lucked into mine, but the way that I did, uh, like I said, I'm very thankful for that consulting opportunity. And as a part of, uh, as a... Um, Part of compensation for working at that, uh, I got to keep a PS5, and uh, it's been a great system. Uh, we'll get into it when we talk about PlayStation 5 games uh, in, an, in a future video, but uh, boy, Astro's Playroom really stood out for me. I mean, the way they use that DualSense controller is kind of nuts. It is really, really pretty great, and I hate cleaning these stupid gutters. There we go. That one finally cha-chinged. There we go. I think we're almost done with our house, guys. We'll have to move on to something else. Uh, okay, that one is done. 
But uh, yeah, the PlayStation 5, very happy about that. Uh, there's been some pretty good games on there so far. And I really want to see what developers, I really hope that they don't just use it for gimmicks, but they that they can truly find a way to use the dual sense half as good as Astro's Playroom because that just blows my mind how cool that is. And the way I think, like, again, the potential for combining, you know, text-to-speech or audio cues, but that level of detail in haptic feedback could be absolutely huge for accessibility. There's so many things you could do with that. Uh, I talked about that during the review of my PlayStation 5, so you can check that out too. Um, but that came out earlier this year. We had the iPhone 13 series. 13, 13 Pro Max, 13 Mini, 13 whatever the hell. Um, there's, what, four of them, I think, now? It's it's almost hard to keep track these days because there's so many models that are out there. Um, but I got the 13 Pro Max. Again, I was sort of debating because I'm like, well, I had the iPhone 10. And they're talking about a major redesign next year. My battery life on the 10s Max was pretty good, but I still I don't regret buying the upgrade. The camera, especially for using it as a CCTV, like the as quick as it focuses, is fantastic. The amount of battery, like the battery life in this thing, is completely again ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, I hardly even plug it in anymore because I'll use it and then when I'm sitting in front of my computer I'll just shove it on the wireless charger for a while and uh, like occasionally I'll plug it into a wall but like a lot of times I just kind of top it off when I'm working at home and and there you go like it's just the battery lasts like if you can be a heavy heavy user and still get through a day. I remember back when I had even like the six plus and stuff. Like, I had my battery packs, and it just it was one of those things where, um, the battery was me. Eh, it was okay, but it really could have been better. And again, now the the battery life on this thing is just phenomenal. So, very very happy with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Yes, it is very expensive. Um. But again, it's not. Uh, you got to look at it where it's not just a phone. <clears throat> People carry these things everywhere with them. They're a they're a portable computer <clears throat> that just so happens to make phone calls. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it. So, you know what? Thirteen hundred dollars for a hell of a computer that you can hold in the palm of your hand. Yeah. Okay. I. You know. Yeah. It seems expensive when you buy it, but. You know what? It's all right. And, oh, I, how did I not finish this? Wow, I'm like, what the hell didn't I finish? And then I get this gaping thing of dirt on this black back wall. <laughs> um, I thought I was going through everything pretty sequentially. Like, we don't have very much left on this house at all. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm missing. I could look at the details, or we could just move on. And I can come back and fix it later. Um, cause I want to keep the videos moving here, but, um, so we have the iPhone, um, very happy with that. We have, um, I talked a little bit about this in my other video or the first video. Um, I have not gotten an Oculus Quest 2 yet. Probably won't unless I look into no, uh, one somehow or if I wait. But honestly, you know, aside from maybe a couple of videos that I may have already recorded, I have not used VR much in the last several months. I did a couple little things before I upgraded my computer. Um, may, might have recorded a couple of videos. Um, But again, the Oculus Quest, you know, the iOS app for Oculus has gotten so bad for voiceover accessibility that it's really hard for me to do anything with it anymore. 
And, you know, if I hook up anything to my new computer, like I said, you need 15 cables to hook up to the rift to your PC. You know, you got your sensors and your quest, and then you got the HDMI, then you got your controller, you've got just all these different things and I already have a lot of stuff plugged into my USB as it is right now so if I do anything I'll probably hook up my Quest and kind of see how it works as a Rift S sort of thing that way but um, yeah so I've kind of taken a break on VR largely because I am frustrated that we are not seeing any consumer-facing improvement in VR accessibility. There's nothing, you know, there's like all platforms now. You got Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Xbox, PS5. Well, Nintendo doesn't have text-to-speech, but at least they have a Zoom feature. Um, like, everybody is adding like some common core accessibility features into their hardware and their system software but nothing steam vr playstation vr oculus for sure i've tried contacting them how many times and i haven't gotten any luck so i'm i'm just i'm tired of jumping through so many hoops I'm tired of halfway getting into a game or an experience and then realizing that I can't fully enjoy it because there's an interface that's jank or that I just I can't adjust settings or I can't see something in the game itself and like all the workarounds that I've talked about in some of these videos you know holding it up against holding the headset up and looking at the mirrored image on my computer or having to record a video clip just to even see an interface like it there's only so long you can do that before you say you know fuck it and just be like no we're not doing this anymore and I've made that perfectly clear in XR access I said you know what I'm not you know I'm happy to help you and I will help as however I can in XR access but as far as me regularly using VR right now I'm really not because and then I've told them why you know I told them basically what I just told you guys um, and I you know I think it's really kind of starting to sink in you know I've told I've told that on podcast appearances when I did the vision forward thing I said yeah this here's the thing about VR when it's when it works it's simply amazing um, but I've just have been having so much frustration with it the last year or two. I mean, I've always had frustrations with it, but I'm, I've just lost enough patience with having to do all these workarounds that I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to support you guys until, you know, you don't just talk about accessibility. You know, you don't just put it as a thing that you say in one of your keynotes and until you actually do something with it that is not in a research lab, but it is actually something that a person like you or me could buy or download or use, then I'm not really going to support you very much. That's just the way it is. Um, so that's kind of my kind of current take on VR. I want to use it. I love it. I love the potential of virtual reality. But it's just been really tough to do. Uh, let me look here. I um, think... Oh, the Switch OLED. Yes. Uh, that was another one that I almost didn't buy. I was this close. I was so close to canceling the pre-order for that. Because when it was announced, you know, everyone was going on about the potential of a, um, a Switch Pro, you know, that had beefier innards in it. And I, I have to imagine that's coming at some point soon. And maybe they would have done that if there wasn't the chip shortage. You know, maybe they just kind of put out what they had for the parts they could use. Like, yeah, we'll give them a better screen and 
couple other basic things, but they didn't do a Switch Pro because they couldn't, or I don't know if they had originally planned a Switch Pro or not, or whatever, but they released the OLED version this year, and um, again, I like I said, I kind of wanted to wait for an actual spec bump because the Switch, as great as it is, is really starting to show its age. Like, it cannot compete with uh, even some current gen, you know, some past gen games. You know, there's games like Guardians of the Galaxy, or I forget a couple of the other ones that are you can only play them through the cloud, you know, kind of like you would play a Stadia game or something like that. Um, some of this stuff, you just, the Switch just physically can't run. And now that we're starting to get into the PS5, Xbox Series generation, there's not a chance. You know, uh, a lot of the games that have been coming out have been cross-gen. So... We've had, um, you know, we, we can still do some things that were on the Xbox One. We can still kind of do some of that on the Switch. So we've been okay. But now as we start to uh, not really support those consoles anymore, and we start getting PS5 and Xbox Series exclusives, uh, it's going to be a thing. You know, it's going to be... The Switch is not going to be able to keep up. But um, as a low-vision gamer... I love OLED, like the clarity, the crispness, the brightness. Um, I, you know, when it first became available, I was able to get a pre-order, and I thought, well, even if I want to cancel it later, as hard as it is to get anything like the PS5 or Xboxes right now, hey, I was able to get a, um, a Switch OLED pre-order, so I pre-ordered it. And about a week before it was going to ship, I, like I said, I was very close. I actually had the page open to where I was considering canceling the uh, canceling the pre-order. But I didn't, and you know what? I'm glad that I didn't, because just being able to read some of the text with magnification and seeing some of the detail, like I played a lot of the Castlevania Advance Collection, and some of those games just look stunning. Uh, on OLED. So, I, you know, yeah, I'm going to be bummed if they come out with like, oh, here, well, now we have the Switch Pro next year, and now we got to upgrade again. Um, yeah, that'll suck, and I don't know what we're going to do then, but I really do like the Switch OLED. Not only does it have the OLED brighter screen but it's slightly larger than the original and every little bit of space helps so i do really like the switch oled model which yes that is actually what they call it oh what else have we done oh the computer upgrade yes 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 the computer upgrade the computer that i'm using to record this video so i had been talking about updating my computer hell since riley was up here i've been thinking about it because when i played certain games uh, i would hear the fan and it would just be making these just really kind of ominous noises like the fan or something was going to crap out any minute and then i would be screwed up and i wouldn't have anything um usually i do a custom pc have someone build me one or whatever but this year i went i did something different and i went with uh i did a review for it on the channel recently so you can check it out but i got this hp omen pre-built pc because the parts again like yeah okay the rtx 3080 supposed to be 700 dollars retail which is expensive as it is but honestly the cheapest one i could even find was 1400 bucks 1200 maybe no it was like 1300 something uh but most of them were like 2400 or right about there i'm like uh-uh i'm not spending that much on just the video card so, yeah, even with the parts that were in my new rig, it was expensive. But it was far cheaper than it would have been trying to build this thing separately. I probably would have spent another, at least another grand <clears throat> with that. So, I'm very happy with my new PC so far. It's running well. 
Uh, I've been playing several different kind of games on it. I, I Like I said, I wish the fan on it. I wish they had a little bit more cooling with it. A little more front fans. That's my one major complaint about it. But so far it's been holding up pretty well. Um, and I don't think it's a computer issue. I think because I've heard other people are having similar issues. Uh, but I Halo Infinite has been crashing my system quite a bit. Now, I have not played since that first weekend. They have issued one patch, uh, major patch, earlier this past week. Maybe that'll fix some of it. I don't know, but I've updated my graphics drivers. I've updated Windows. I've updated everything I could possibly think of. You know, I close other things down, but the game just... It, it's a really fun game is the bad part. It's... I want to play it, but like I said, just the stability... Um, that's been the main thing, but otherwise it's played everything else quite well. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy and Quake 2 RTX and just all kinds of other stuff we'll talk about later. But, um, yeah, so very happy with my PC... So, yeah, it has been a very expensive year, and even though it's not like a phone or a computer, I gotta mention, I gotta mention Optimus. I gotta mention him, because I saw that unveiled this summer, and I looked at it and went, good God, that's cool, and like, I never buy expensive collectibles like that, but I've always loved Optimus Prime, I've always loved the Transformers, and, you know, check out my video for that, because I didn't even show you everything that it could do. But even the stuff I showed you, it's amazing. It is very, very cool. So I got this self-converting, as they call it, but self-transforming Optimus Prime. It transforms by itself. It talks in Peter Cullen's voice. You can program it, you can control it. it it's just crazy. Um, so I'm extremely <clears throat> I'm extremely happy with that collectible so far. Like it's just very cool. And I've shown it to maybe two or three people, and everyone's like, okay, yeah, I know that's expensive, but kind of worth it. I kind of want one. <laughs> Even they're like, yeah, 700 bucks, but yeah, okay, that's really, really cool. I kind of want one. So I feel vindicated. I feel justified. And I love it anyway. So, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of tech came out. Of course, you have your regular assistive technology updates. NVDA 21.3 just came out. Uh, had some fixes for Office and different things like that. Um, we, of course, Windows 11, that came out uh, recently. And overall, I'm really kind of liking Windows 11. Like, it largely, I would kind of call it a Windows 10.5. Yeah, the start menu is a little, is different, uh, but I actually like the start menu better. Um the settings area is definitely a little bit different. Uh, I'm still kind of getting used to that, how they organize some things, but I think actually with the way they're kind of going forward with it, it, it actually does sort of make sense. And so it's just, I, you know, I'm used to it a certain way, so it feels weird to me, but I think, especially for new users, I think it could really make sense with the way they've designed it. Uh, we still have some control panel stuff here and there, but even that, I think they're trying to, you know, get more of that out of control panel and retire as much of that as they can and put that into the settings app. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Windows 11, like, I haven't had any compatibility problems, like all my recording software, streaming software games nvda has worked well i have not put jaws on here because i just don't necessarily want it interfering with other stuff that i'm doing and i don't really need it for my day job or for my working at home so i have it on my work computer but i don't have it on my personal um 
but no, Windows 10, like, it's played all my games. It's, uh, everything that I've really wanted it to do, aside from Halo crashing all the time. Uh, it's been good. It's been good. Windows 11 has not been bad. That being said, if you are waiting for Windows 11 and wondering when you're going to get it, there's nothing, like, there's nothing killer. There's not that killer feature that says, oh, you better get this because it's so amazing. Um, just wait till, you know, if your device can handle it, uh, if it meets Microsoft's requirements, which again are a little bit screwy, I don't really like some of that, but, you know, if, you're, if your machine can support it, just wait till it comes, it comes to your Windows update and then grab it when you can, because it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You're not really missing out on anything, I mean... Everything that Windows 11 can do, Windows 10 pretty much, pretty much can do the, the same thing. So it's not that big a deal. Uh, but if you can get it, or if you get a new computer that has it, it's not bad. Like I, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Uh, you know, again, like I said, you've had your JAWS and your Zoom Text and your Fusion, all of those types of updates. We've had iOS 15, and iOS 15, honestly, is actually quite good. Um, I know people have had a few problems with it here and there. Uh, I really wish they would fix VoiceOver's focusing issues. There's a few other things that I just wish that Apple would finally just fix here and there. But there's, you know, there's a couple features of iOS 15 specifically that I really, really like. And I did do a video about that uh, earlier this year. But the major one that I really like is um, I, I really like the fact that Safari can support extensions now. Um, Safari, uh, I can have Dark Reader. That is really, really good. Uh, so I use that on my PC. And now, excuse me. And now I use it on my phone. And it's wonderful. Super helpful. So yeah, I mean, I really like some of the usability stuff that they did. Um, you know, some of the do not disturb stuff. You've got some of the shortcut stuff. You've got... I can't even remember. Like I said, I've just kind of just gotten so used to it. I, I don't even remember what was all new in iOS 15. But I know there was at least like two or three things that really made it worth it for me that I really, really liked as a low vision user. And of course, combine that with the new phone and especially its good camera. Um, I think it's a pretty solid update. Uh, they've improved voiceover image recognition, that kind of a thing. So that's been doing some neat stuff. But uh, yeah, so there's sort of your software updates and hardware updates and the year in review of tech. Um, events. I'll talk a little bit about these and then we'll wrap up the video. Actually... Mm. Let's see. Events, trends. Yeah, we'll wrap it up here. And then I'll start another video. Because we'll keep these fairly short. And then I can release them... Um, during the last week of the year. So we'll wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoying, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys are enjoying these kind of wrap up videos and my thoughts on things as we go. Like the video if you did, subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited, illegally cited.com, and right here on YouTube. So until next time, I will chat with you guys in the next video.